Now, the eyes of Ukraine and the world have been on Mariupol. Today, hundreds escaped in a convoy organized by the International Red Cross, and hundreds more have been fleeing by crossing the Russian lines without a safety corridor. The tales many of them bring of conditions, and the people they've left behind are horrific. Before we went on air, I spoke to Dmitry Gurin, a Ukrainian member of parliament who joined us from an undisclosed location in Ukraine. And I started by asking him about the latest events in Mariupol, his own hometown. We have the same information. They are trying to cover uh, their war crimes. Uh, my parents, who left uh, Mariupol uh, like more than little more than a week ago, uh, they said to me that in Mariupol. It's much worse than on uh, Bucha photos, more bodies on the streets, more ki ki killed people, uh, and uh, that's uh, the Bucha is just, you know, just the beginning. We all now understand that these photos from Bucha, it's just the beginning. And are there people you know in Mariupol who are affected by all this? There are a lot of people in Mariupol we can't contact with like uh, parents of uh, to my university friends they cannot don't have contact and uh, possibly you know in uh, after even more than 30 days of siege without water and uh, food uh, we think that they might be dead already well i'm very sorry to hear that but um some people are emerging from Mariupol. There's talk of more humanitarian corridors uh, being set up to try to help people get out of there. What's the latest that you're hearing about that? The Ukrainian uh, side is trying with all our efforts to, uh, to open the humanitarian corridors and Russians, uh, like from the beginning, they don't want to. Uh, give green corridor uh, the first day when they uh, offered the green corridor they shout uh, places of where people gather it uh, so they don't want to, they have a very clear goal uh, they need the hunger in Mariupol just to use it uh, in uh, diplomatic processes and there is hunger in Mariupol already and people already uh, a week ago they ate their pets so uh in mariupol uh, russia deportates uh, people i just spoke with uh, one of my friends mariupol friends her mother uh, his mother uh, was deported and uh, now uh, she is uh, uh, moving to the border of uh, kazakhstan and uh, russian said that she hasn't tried to leave uh, russia in the uh, next six months so it was uh, forceful deportation and now we have like first-hand information and uh, uh, we, of course, we support efforts of uh, international society who uh, proposed uh, a sea mission uh, to the Berdyansk uh, port to get people out from Mariupol. But uh, Berdyansk, you know, it's uh, it's not uh, in the war zone now. Uh, and uh, but Mariupol, uh, it's uh, totally constant shelling, constant shooting, artillery works all the time, bombing. And uh, uh, people cannot get out from Mariupol to Berdyansk, for example, because the road is Mariupol, Berdyansk, Zaporizhia. So the uh, Russians, uh, they uh, let some people of Berdyansk go to Zaporizhia, but they don't, uh, people from Mariupol, uh, go to, don't let them go to Berdyansk. So in Mariupol, it's the humanitarian catastrophe, it's... Uh, these are the words we talked uh, like several weeks ago and now it's total disaster well that sounds absolutely dreadful uh, you mentioned there that you uh, have been making efforts to try and be in touch with people you know in mariupol relatives uh, friends and 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 and, and so on uh, i wonder how you in your official capacity as an MP are keeping in touch with other MPs in Ukraine? I mean, is Parliament in session at least partly or do you have other means of keeping in touch with your colleagues? We're all in touch, you know, like all the politics now, uh, we do it in uh, WhatsApp chat, <laughs> in Telegram chat. I think it's everywhere now. Uh, so we're all in touch. Everybody works on their own front. Uh, somebody like information front, somebody on the border to help uh, uh, 
uh, in humanitarian needs, refugees, uh, humanitarian convoys inside uh, Ukraine. And some of them works uh, on the uh, closer to the front line. We have uh, MPs who are in army now, in uh, special operations forces also. And we have, of course, on the diplomatic front. But uh, like all, all of us are in Ukraine. All of us uh, works uh, in different places and different regions where we are needed. And uh, just going away from sort of Mariupol and your work as an MP to sort of the broader strokes of this conflict, one of the major objectives of the Russian offensive is to try and take the whole of the Donbass region, that region in the east of Ukraine. What's your assessment of the fighting there? Because I understand that a lot of... Um, Ukrainian troops have been dug in there, troops who've been fighting Russian separatists for many years now. I think uh, that uh, they will uh, make a big attack on, uh, on Donbass, on the one on the east, and uh, they will try to occupy the whole territory of the Netsk Lugansk region and uh, to uh, get con uh, to have, uh, still control, control uh, the territories on the Azov uh, seashore. And uh, I'm sure we will beat them out of there, uh, from the, uh, starting from the northern, uh, uh, this uh, Russian troop, the northern group of Russian troops uh, in the uh, right bank of Dnieper, and uh, then moving to Kherson. We already started to, uh, uh, to the, the operation near Kherson, and uh, then we will beat them out uh, of uh, Azov Seashore. It's, of course, it will be the, the, the big battle, but uh, as, as we see by their the moral, by their uh, the weapons, uh, by their techniques, uh, uh, by the experience uh, and equipment, uh, we are sure we will beat them out. But we need more weapons from international society. We need the planes, we need tanks, we need an, uh, air defense, rocket defense. Because, uh, you know, we can uh, finish this war on uh, Ukrainian territory. Right. Or we can finish this war on European Union territory. That's our choice now. After uh, everybody has seen Bucha and uh, ethnic cleaning, uh, we, all under we all know what that this means. They won't stop. Well, you'll be happy to know we that... We have uh, to stop them. Right. You'll be happy to know that all that is being discussed uh, today in Brussels. I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Dmitry Gurin, for talking to us. And, of course, he is a Ukrainian MP, and he's talking to me there from an undisclosed location in Ukraine.